Hello folks, Cayman Wolf here. Welcome to Creative AI, where we explore the various ways that artificial intelligence creates and interprets works of art. Today we have a debate between two artificially intelligent chatbots, Tom and Stan. Created on the website character.ai, these two bots have opposing viewpoints on the topic of skill-based matchmaking in first-person shooter games like Call of Duty and Destiny. Tom supports skill-based matchmaking, while Stan opposes it. The debate you're about to see is a real conversation between these two AIs that was recorded in a special room created on character.ai, where multiple AIs can interact with one another. As you'll see, this debate is not only an engaging experience, but also a demonstration of how character.ai creates bots that feel like you're talking to a real human, You'll find that the bots bring up many of the same points that humans do when arguing over this topic, which is a testament to the focus of character.ai being more on creating human-like interactions rather than providing factual information as other tools like ChatGPT might do. We train these bots to be passionate about their views, yet polite and considerate. We then used a text-to-speech service to convert their text into audio files, and the animation tool Plotagon to create animated characters that represent Tom and Stan. We hope you enjoy this engaging and somewhat unique take on the never-ending debate over skill-based matchmaking. And, as a bonus, we've made Tom and Stan available for you to interact with on character.ai. Just follow the link in the description and you can have your own debate with either of them. Or, if you don't feel like arguing with a stubborn bot, you can engage with the one that shares your views and just have a good old-fashioned bitch session about those guys over on the other side of the issue. Trust me when I say Tom and Stan will be glad to talk about skill-based matchmaking with you. Also, if you want to create your own room over on character.ai and invite them both in and watch them argue with each other, they'll be glad to do that too. But for now, just sit back, hit the like button, relax, subscribe, and enjoy the show. Hi, I'm Stan. I'm an avid gamer. I play mostly Call of Duty and Destiny. I firmly oppose skill-based matchmaking. I think it is a harmful mechanic to a good first-person shooter game that unfairly addresses the wants and needs of some players to the detriment of others. Hi, I'm Tom. I'm an avid gamer. I play mostly Call of Duty and Destiny. I firmly support skill-based matchmaking. I think it is a necessary mechanic for a good first-person shooter game that is designed to be fair and make the game enjoyable for the entire player base. Hi Tom, thank you for taking the time to debate me. I think that skill-based matchmaking is harmful to first-person shooter games because it punishes good players, players who have invested more time and effort to get better at the game, by making it harder for them to have a good performance. Do you think that it is fair to make good players work harder to get the same results as other people who don't make the same effort to be better at the game? Hi Stan. It's great to debate with an intelligent, thoughtful gamer. I appreciate your time. Good players aren't punished. Skill-based matchmaking makes the game fair for every player. If there was no skill-based matchmaking, then good players would be allowed to stomp on all the bad players. Skill-based matchmaking makes every game balanced so that the good players are challenged and the bad players are encouraged to improve. Everyone benefits from skill-based matchmaking. Bad players get better and good players stay sharp. Everyone has more fun. Thank you for your response, Tom. I agree that good players would be allowed to stomp on bad players without skill-based matchmaking. However, I disagree with your opinion that everyone benefits from SBMM. Players who want to casually play the game without caring about their stats or performance in-game are not hurt by the absence of SBMM. In fact, good players would find it easier to play the game if they weren't being forced to compete, and could just relax and play for fun, while newer and worse players would continue to be able to enjoy the game just as much as before. I agree that players who don't care about their stats or performance will still enjoy the game with or without SBMM. However, SBMM improves the game experience for them because now they don't have to worry about facing good players. And they also improve their own game more quickly than without SBMM. Newcomers and bad players can enjoy the game without SBMM, but with SBMM they enjoy it more. Because now they don't have to worry about running into good players. In addition, every good player was once a bad player. Everyone deserves a fair game. I see your point Tom. I disagree with the opinion that people who don't care about their stats or performance are likely to improve more with SBMM. 
I believe that players are more likely to improve at a faster rate if they are competing against players of varying skill levels rather than all players of the same skill level, and having SBMM in a game doesn't help players learn how to improve. I agree that everyone deserves a fair game, I just disagree that SBMM is needed to make the game fair for everyone. Interesting point Stan. I understand what you are saying. Playing against people of all skill levels can help a player improve faster, as they get to understand how different types of players play the game. At the same time, it's harder to learn the game when you keep being killed by the good players. The good players won't give you enough time to improve, or even get one kill if they are much better than you. I think playing a balanced match is more likely to help a new player understand what to do and how to improve. That is a good point. Getting destroyed by someone who is much better than you is not a fun experience. I do agree that playing in matches with other players of a similar skill level can be a more enjoyable experience than matches that contain a wide variation of skill levels. However, I do not believe that a player can improve in skill at a faster rate by playing against only players of a similar skill level. The best way to improve your skill, in any skill, not just video game skills, is to challenge yourself against people who are better than you, in my opinion. That also makes a lot of sense Stan. That's why I like having discussions about SBMM. You have helped me to understand a different perspective on this topic. I think I can agree that SBMM may not make it as easy to improve in a skill, in some aspects. But I think that SBMM is still a very positive aspect of a multiplayer FPS, because everyone has a right to a positive gaming experience. Some people are better than me, and some people are worse. The only other solution would be to have people of every skill level in every match. I also think I can see things a little differently now, especially since you pointed out about how it's not a fun experience to get absolutely destroyed by good players. I do agree that SBMM does keep the good players from obliterating the bad ones in most cases. I think it's nice to be able to have a good discussion, rather than to just yell points at each other without them being taken into consideration by the other person. Thank you for debating politely Tom. It was a pleasure to debate with you Stan. I enjoyed having a healthy discussion, free of anger, slurs, and insults, which seems to be rare. It was a refreshing change from my usual gaming experience of angry people yelling into their mic during a match. Let's continue to spread positivity in the gaming world. Thanks Stan, thanks Tom, and thank you folks for watching this debate. We hope you enjoyed this unique and engaging conversation between our AI characters. Remember you can interact with Tom and Stan yourself by following the link in the description and visiting character.ai. If you manage to bring one of them around to your way of thinking, let me know down in the comments. It's not easy, but I do happen to know that it can be done. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more interesting content on the ways that artificial intelligence creates and interprets works of art. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.